I paid $9 for this bag of coins, so let's see what we get. This is my next video in a series of uh, pickups that I made at a recent small town coin show in Cookville, Tennessee. Uh, I went to the show in February, so this is now a month later. And um, there were five different dealers that sold grab bags of foreign coins. This one was 1.8 pounds and had a price of nine dollars and this is the last one that he had i see a couple of nice coins on the outside but let's see what's on the inside and uh, let me pause it while i get through these staples there's certainly a lot here and a lot of common things of course but uh, we're going to see if we get any winners and if there are coins that we've seen in some of my recent videos i'm going to skip through them but first, let's take a look at this aluminum coin. I think this one is from Austria, 1957. And this is a one shilling coin. I do like that design. From Hungary, we have a one forint. I'm going through and picking out several coins that are quite common, but I found several of these George VI Canadian pennies. So Canadian pennies aren't always that exciting, but if you're going to get one, uh, might as well at least be uh, George the Sixth. I've narrowed it down a little bit further, and I want to come to this uh, coin from New Zealand that features a, I believe that's called a Maori mask on their 10 cent coin. At first, it almost looks like a butterfly, but if you look closely, you can see uh, it's a mask that would go over the face. There's a couple of eyes and a mouth with a tongue sticking out. I, and uh, I have some pretty good versions of this in the newer copper version, which didn't last as long. This coin, sadly, is must have been taped or glued to something. So uh, that's not too good. Here is a coin from Taiwan. I believe uh, that side is up. From Japan, we have a 50 yen coin. So I'm glad to see that in a bag like this. Uh, this has an exchange value of about 50 cents. So if they're not going to pull that out, you know that uh, there might be some pretty good things in here. Here's a coin from Greece. Twenty drachmas. I'm not sure why, but the Greeks uh, changed from the drachma to the drachmas. Or they, they changed the plural of drachma from ending in uh, A-I to E-S. Somewhere along the way. Not quite sure why they, they did that. This might be the oldest coin in here. I believe this one is from Spain. It has Alfonso the Twelfth written on it with the date of 1870. Maybe that's 1872. Ten dies centimos. Obviously well-worn, like you'll see for a lot of copper coins this old, but always interesting to find something like that in a lot like this. This one is probably going to be from Syria or Egypt. And uh, whatever that is, it's going to be ten of something. Ooh, for an aluminum coin, you don't really see uh, writing along the edges too often. And that just looks like, uh, and I'm not sure if that's uh, words or not, but uh, moving on to Ireland, we've got a half penny showing a, um, a swine with some piglets coming up to it. Irish with the harp. Let's see, here is from East Caribbean States. Here's a $1 coin with uh, Queen Elizabeth on it. Another one from Ireland. We have the 20 pence uh, showing off a horse. Another one from Austria. Here is a two groschen. 1925 Osterreich. Here's one from Ecuador, 1964. 10 centavos. 
And here we have a silver coin, which is, again, something that you wouldn't expect to find in a grab bag for $9, where it's about $5 a pound. Now, this is not a silver coin you'd lose sleep over because it's about 40%. But that's still going to be worth, uh, well, usually I see the 10 ores um, pretty commonly, but th that might be about still less than 50 cents of, of silver value and something like that. But that's something that you can put and uh, go ahead and put my uh, silver trade pile, and here's the tin ore to go with it. So uh, two small silver coins in this grab bag is uh, surprising. Here we have a 25 ore. I don't think this one is silver, but it is made from about the same time. Next, uh, let's see, this one is a... Dirty coin from Peru. It's a half sold oro. And this is a, a commemorative from the 400th. Uh, I've seen one of these before, but not the half a soul. I, I think this is the 400th anniversary of the mint in Lima. So I wish that one was in better condition, but that's a. Uh, uh, was a one-year coin, and as I was going through here, I saw another one from that set that I don't see it at the moment, we'll, but we'll come back to it when, when we find it. So here's a 20 filler, another aluminum coin from Hungary, 1959. From Yugoslavia, here's a larger 50 dinar coin from 1987. Pretty good shape. From Portugal, we have 50 escudos. Quite a large coin, an interesting uh, sailboat design on this side. From Jamaica, here is a one penny from 1955. This is a coin that I find often and always in pretty bad shape, it seems like. Here's another uh, Taiwan coin. This one is aluminum. Again, uh, showing the uh, shape of the island. From Portugal, here is the 25 Escudos. Now that I pull this one up, I don't recognize this one as much from... Uh, and I guess I do. Let's see, uh, for five cents with the fish, this is going to be from Bermuda. First, I thought this one was another one from Jamaica, but it's actually from Iceland. So it's kind of a larger coin, so we can get a good view of the crest on here. Two kroner. So I like the look of that one. Another one with Queen Elizabeth. This one is from Cyprus. 25 mils. Here's one from Israel. 25, uh, probably 25 shekel, maybe it's 25 agarot, with an old-fashioned harp shown on it. Here is a coin from Tunisia with a little bit of luster left to it. And I just happen to recognize it as Tunisia, but that's 1960, so a little bit spotty, but still in pretty good shape for being that old. See, this one is a uh, a one peseta design from Spain that uh, you don't see very often. This is very tiny. This is smaller than a U.S. dime, and made out of aluminum. So about this time, uh, this peseta was worth about half of a, a U.S. penny. All right, this coin is going to be from Ethiopia because I recognize that uh, particular lion design. It's got an alphabet that you don't see hardly anywhere else. Uh, going from memory, I don't know the denomination of that coin, but that's a pretty nice pickup. Uh, here's an Irish uh, one penny. I believe their pennies were the same size as the... Uh, 
UK pennies and half pennies and three pence and six pence. Another one from Yugoslavia. This is a ten denara from the 50s. This one, I believe, is Sweden, because Sweden always uh, displays the three crowns. This is going to be a one ore coin from 1950. Another Ethiopian coin. I believe this one is a little bit larger than the last one, but still has a very similar design. It's just everything's a little bit bigger on it. Here's a coin from the Czech Republic. If I hold it like that, it looks uh, almost a mint condition. It isn't, but uh, I like the way that the uh, light was hitting it right there. Uh, two Czech Karuna. Then from Ecuador, 1946, we have 10 centavos. From Switzerland, here's a currency that's worth more than a U.S. penny. That's 10 rappen. So that's worth more than uh, 10 U.S. cents in exchange value. I'm thinking this one is Dominican. And yes, it is. Here is a five-cent coin from Fiji. 1982. Another uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss coin. They used the similar design for over 100 years. This one's uh, 1946, 5 Rappen. Fairly uh, common coin from China. This is, I believe, a 2 Fen. And while we're at it, here is the 1. Next up, here's a coin from Kenya, highlighting the first president of Kenya, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, 50 cents from 1969, had another one from Kenya right here, much larger coin, uh, made of, I think, brass, 1971, 10 cents, but uh, shame there's uh, so much uh, one big spot on it right here, but that is a neat crest with a couple of lions on it. Same uh, person highlighted. Another one from Portugal, uh, the two and a half Escudo. At one time, this coin was made of silver, but not 1982. This coin from the Philippines is pretty common, but this one's in really nice shape. Uh, it is not silver uh, at this time, but from 1964, 25 centavos. There are a couple versions of this coin, depending on how many rings of smoke you can count coming from the volcano. Not sure what the years are on that, but uh, see that coin very often, but that one's in really nice shape. Here's a uh, German zinc coin from World War II where it uh, has the uh, swastika underneath the eagle there. Five Reichsfennig. Here's a uh, low-value coin from France that is um, surprisingly hard. Uh, you don't see them all that often. But I think they made a one, two, and five with this design, and each one was a little bit bigger. That was... Uh, quite worthless by the time they switched to the euro. Here is a Greek euro cent. Nope, I'm wrong. Uh, but it is a one drachma. And uh, that name is uh, almost looks like it's written in cursive Greek, which I've never seen anywhere but on coins, so I'm not able to read that name. Another Arabic coin. 
Again, probably anytime I see this eagle with the zero or two or three stars on it, it's usually going to be from Egypt or from Syria. That one has a date of 1970 on it. And uh, the, the zero at the top, or the circle at the top, means it's going to be five a denomination. Let's see, here's another euro, a 10 cent. This one's going to be from... Hmm, I think that is Germany, and that is going to be the Brandenburg Gate on that coin. So, interesting to see those. Here's a 20 euro cent. This one is going to be from, also from Germany with the Brandenburg Gate. So, very similar design, just a little bit bigger on this one. One way that I could tell is the German coins have multiple different mint marks. So, the last one was an F, this one is a J. And what do we have here? Another, that one's a fairly old coin for this kind of lot. We've got a German coin, German Empire from 1906, one Finnig. Let's go back and take a look at the eagle for a moment. Arabic coin with a large tree, that's going to make it Cedars of Lebanon. So that's a Lebanese coin. That date is not 1900, it's 1955. This is going to be a 10 piastres coin and I flip it over and it does confirm that it's 10 piastres from 1955. Here's a Soviet, no, uh, that's actually going to be Bulgaria, 10 Statinki from 1962. Has a very Soviet look to it. From France, we have a one-year commemorative coin uh, honoring Charles de Gaulle. It's going to be a one franc coin. Here's the other Peruvian coin that I uh, knew I saw earlier. It's upside down. Celebr at least this one doesn't uh, appear to be as dirty or as damaged. It is a smaller coin, but again, it's the 400th anniversary of the mint of lima so it's got the date of 1565 to 1965 across the bottom the name uh, lima close to the top and that is a 10 centavos a little bit of a newer coin from hungary from 1994 we have the uh, tin for it, and at this time, a lot of their coins had a similar design to them. Another from Portugal. We've got tin escudos. From the Bank of Uganda. 1966, five cents. So uh, that has a design that reminds me of the British African states. So... Uh, Uganda at this time must have been uh, coming off of that. Another from Tunisia. Another from Austria. We saw the uh, the two earlier, but here is the five Groschen. Here's an Asian country that I can't identify right away. Here we go. Okay, it is from... Cambodia from 1959, 10 sen, uh, made of aluminum. I'm glad I wrote Cambodia on it. I was uh, wondering if it was that or uh, Laos. Here is a uh, brass coin from Thailand. King uh, Rama on it. This is going to be uh, probably 50 Satang, not a full bot. Here's one from Israel. Next up, here's another real tiny coin. 
Another one from Bulgaria. That one's going to be one Statinka. 1962. While we're looking at very small coins, this one is from Argentina from 1942. Sometimes these low denomination tiny coins are actually harder to find because uh, they just got lost easy and they didn't have any value, so no one held on to them. So, well, uh, one centavo. Coming up next, we have another uh, coin with 10 piastres. I don't recognize the design yet, uh, but it's going to be another one from Lebanon. From 1970. I don't, I don't recognize that design right away, but it's in a lot better shape than the last uh, 10 piastre coin that we had. Here's one from France, and the last time I picked up one of these, it was as uh, bad of a shape as this one. It's made out of zinc, but it seems like every time I find these, they're very brittle. This one is feels like I could just break that in half if I wanted to, so I'm not going to. Here's an 80s-looking Netherlands coin with uh, Queen Beatrix. Looks like it's made out of graph paper uh, with uh, 25. Our next uh, small coin, about the size of a dime, from Hong Kong, 5 cents. 1972, a reeded edge. From Greece, we have this aluminum tin leptacoin. From 1959. 1922 from Belgium. 25 centimes. That one's uh, bigger than a U.S. quarter. Our next coin from either Syria or Egypt. Another with a value of five. Next, next one from Greece, 1954. Five drachmai. Earlier I had one that said drachmis, but this one is drachmai, ends in an AI. Ten cents, 1961, from Malaya and British Borneo. This uh, soon after this, uh, that area became Malaysia. Here's another coin from Taiwan. I have to remember which side is up. It has a uh, flower on this side. Another zinc coin from World War II days, another German uh, swastika coin. And it's going to be one Reichsfinnig. Here is one from Turkey. That's going to be 10 Kurus from 1958. Pretty well worn, though. Here's an old aluminum coin from Japan. I believe that's going to be five sen, and there are uh, three different versions of this coin from going from memory based on the thickness. One more Arabic coin. 1970. Again, I think this uh, tin is going to be from Egypt. Okay, here is a two Deutschmark coin from 1970. Another one uh, that is good to see in here because I think this one still has an exchange value of about a dollar. And a lot of their twos and their fives were commemoratives. But I forget who this is commemorating on here in uh, 1969. And I'm saving this coin last for a reason. Uh, this almost looks like a, uh, I believe that's going to be from Morocco, but it looks like a silver coin, so 
I want to look this one up. That's going to be from 1960. I found it. It is from Morocco, and it is made out of silver. Now, uh, my catalog here is 26 years old, so don't go by the prices on here. But as it says, this coin is 60% silver. And that means that it is over 0.11 ounces of silver. So in today's value, just in silver value, uh, this is going to be about 250 just in uh, silver value. So to find this, that whole bag cost me $9. And if you were to ask me, is this was this bag worth $9? Definite yes, even if I had to skip through a lot of Canadian pennies to get to this. Um, you know, this coin uh, had about three and a half dollars worth of silver in it. And so just take those coins out and then I paid five and a half dollars for everything else. Uh, definitely a win in here. So uh, every time I, I say that I hope a coin makes the, uh, the thumbnail video uh, or the thumbnail I'm really going to hope this one uh, ends up making the thumbnail on this particular video, although that usually doesn't happen when I uh, save it for the very end. But yeah, the, the book said this coin was only made in 1960, and I think this was the only year they made the one Durham coin out of silver. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Uh, this is uh, something that I do every time I get the chance. Um, I have another... Uh, I think I have three more unboxing videos from recent coin shows that I went to from uh, Mystery Lots like this one. Hope they are as much of a winner as this one was. And then I've got another three or four or five different uh, lots of coins that I've purchased lately uh, at these uh, last couple of coin shows that I went to over the last six weeks or so. So uh, if you like that, please check out my uh, CMIDTN Foreign Coin Showcase. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.